So, what you'll find yourself staring at here is a fairly new aftermarket replacement motor mount. You'll know, not much dirt on it, just a little bit, no rust really. But you'll also note that it kind of bulges out the sides funny. Well, that's actually a new motor mount because my original motor mount failed. Well, not original to it, but the last set I put in there had failed. They, uh, they contributed to the Jeep breaking yet another exhaust manifold. I have a wall of shame of broken ones. I've got a headman that tore. I've got, actually, I threw out the factory one that was already broken when I got it. It cracked at the welds. The headman, when I say it tore, somebody ground their welds too much, and then there basically just wasn't enough steel. And when it got a bit of strain, a lot of heat, it tore itself right open. So that died. And now I have the creme de la creme, the Banks Performance header, which I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it's hard, getting hard to find on their website. They may not be making it anymore. So I'd really rather not have to replace another exhaust manifold. It's a pain in the butt because intake and exhaust are on the same side on a Cherokee. They are not a cross flow head. So it's not like you have a nicely exposed header that's easy to get to. No, they are a huge pain in the butt and they run the entire length of the engine. So contributing factors to that, broken motor mounts. These motor mounts are $13 Canadian each. They are the only thing I can buy in town. In Canada, they are the only thing I can buy other than polyurethane. No one seems to carry anything else and shipping here is just absolutely horrendous it will cost you more than the motor mount to ship a motor mount to you because i don't know some places just don't seem to have their their crap together but if you have to ship ship us postal service for whatever reason they work really well and they are typically the cheapest and they don't typically ding you for made up fees crossing the border like some of the others where you'll end up paying at one point i remember being given a $50, that's $50 fee for a $15 used auto part. That's $15. Now, the funny part about that is, at the time, and it's probably still true, there is no duty on used auto parts. They are duty free, meaning you should not be charged to cross the border. So, that was a huge ripoff, and they got to keep their part because I was not going to pay that. That was just robbery. Anyways, so I went with some, I think they're brown dog motor mounts. They do use rubber bushings in them, but they're a lot beefier than these junky things. We'll get a better look at those once I have them out. These haven't failed yet, but the keyword is they haven't failed yet. They will be failing because they're, they're just not very strong and they're not the most durable rubber. You'll see the kind of almost design flaw to them, which eh, it might be in case of an accident so the engine drops down or something like that, but realistically, one of these big inline sixes, it does not have much room to go anywhere under the hood here. So try not to run into things. And if you run into things, have a big bumper. Hopefully it's not a person because you'll feel pretty awful for wrecking somebody with a big bumper. Anyways. Now to get to the fun of this. So, in case you're wondering with the motor mounts, not on this end, I believe it's a 18 millimeter, 18 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and I can't remember what it's underneath. I think it might be a 15 mil, but I'll let you know. Just so you can have the right tools ready. Now keep in mind, loosen this and your engine will fall. Or be supported by your exhaust manifold and crack your manifold. So let's not do that. There are two ways to kind of do this. Guys will sometimes build a two by four that goes across the top and suspends the motor from the top. It has to hang off an eye. Well, I don't have one of those. I also don't have my uh, cherry picker handy, so we won't be using a cherry picker on there. Another way to do it is to use a, basically pad your jack and gently push up into the bottom of the engine and just barely support it there. Try to use the thickest spot you can on there. It could deform it and cause all sorts of problems. So, use caution. All right, brown dog motor mounts. What is in the box? We've got one motor mount, two motor mounts. 
new fasteners for mounting them to the actual chassis and some pretty darn in-depth directions. They're actually quite good. I'm pretty impressed so far. I also have a funny uh, thought. I hadn't realized that the driver's side uses a bolt on the top side and the passenger side has a stud and uses a nut. So you look at this and it says, two motor mounts, replacement mounting hardware. And you think, you're crazy. But no, sure enough, it's a one bolt, one washer for the driver's side and one shoulder nut for the passenger side. I like their little note. It doesn't look right, but it is. It will become clear when you get into the installation. <laughs> yeah, they're right. Let's see what these guys look like. Yeah. Maybe I just scared it by pulling a knife out. Another very nice note. Passenger side, install other side first. New nut, welded in bolt. That is basically the grade eight equivalent of metric. And these ones are rubber, not polyurethane. That was done on purpose. I've got a dog that's pretty sensitive to uh, even the label there, so you're completely sure. These guys do a really nice job. We've got a dog that's really nervous about kind of vibrating sounds. And, well, I didn't want to put him through polyurethane bushings that might uh, transmit more uh, vibration to the body than anything. So, that is why we have this. There you go. This will be way, way stronger than what is put on there from factory or, or what you, actually factory is probably better than what you're getting in the aftermarket for 13 bucks. These ones are about 96 US plus taxes, shipping, all the things to you. So yes, they're more expensive, but I'm so sick of replacing motor mounts. I think I've done two or three sets now. And it's just, it's just a matter of time when you spend a lot of time in low range. It just will tear them up. So there you go. Let's get them in. All right, Brown Dog says to basically take the bolts out of the transmission mount. Now, if I remember correctly, there's some in the cross member here, but you'll note I have this handy dandy worn transfer case skid blade. Well, they come with self tappers, so at some point, I got sick of those because they were just stripping and they were garbage. They're really kind of a one-time use thing. So each of these bolts has a nut cert that I put in. So there's six of them. They're all half inch. And then I think it's a 9 16th carriage bolt that pops through there. If you use a ratcheting uh, ratcheting combination wrench, like a box end open end, you, you will not hate yourself nearly as much as if you do not because the clearances are tight in there. Uh, it is what it is, but Brown Dog seems to really stress that you should remove these or you will tear up your rubber mount and cause all sorts of nasty vibrations, which you will then blame on the mounts. So they probably know what they're talking about. Let's do it. So following the Brown Dog instructions, I loosened, well, took off the nuts on the transmission mount so it could come out. So hopefully it doesn't tear itself. Um, I'm not putting lift mounts in at all. I'm not trying to get the engine up higher. I'm putting basically a stock replacement size in. So remember, 18 on the end of the big bolt, 13 there, and 15 on the nut on the bottom that goes to the stud. So I'm gonna have to crawl underneath and do that. And it is in a tight spot, so I probably won't even have video, video for you. Just realize it is on the bottom side of that point right there. So, when you look at this mount, that is what you can see there, that hole, and that stud through, that's going to be your new one. So, 
Now to get under there and take care of that guy. The engine's supported just on the, uh, this time I tried supporting on the bell housing. I've got an extension on my jack and a big rubber pad there. And in theory, it should be pretty strong there. Probably better than lifting it with the sheet metal sump. So we'll see. Directions don't tell you where you should lift, probably because there are pitfalls to many of the ways to lift. So can't really blame them. This pain is about to get to. There it is up there. You can see the kind of heavier sheet metal. And there's that one nut there that looks a bit wet. You can also see I've taken off the large 18 mil. And you can see my bank's performance header there that I'm quite impressed with. Although we changed the downpipe and got rid of that big crush section. It's kind of in a prototype stage, so I'll have to change that more again to get it to tuck a little bit better. But wow, you don't lose torque, but you gain Actually, I'll be honest, it feels like you gain torque in the bottom end and power everywhere. I highly recommend if you're going with a header like this and a free flow exhaust that you get rid of that crush section. But you'll likely have to make it out of mandrel bins because, well, most machines aren't capable of making bins as tight as is necessary to do it. So to be continued on that one. Now at this point, I have the motor mount off. Um, it's basically a combination of, I've done these so recently, I used anti-seize on them, so everything was pretty easy to get off, including the through bolt. That one can be a real pain if it's rusted in place, but these motor mounts are only, oh, I'd be amazed if they had a few thousand kilometers on them. They probably have been in there under a thousand kilometers, so they are quite new. They don't really look it, that's mainly dirt. But here's the design of them. They basically have rubber around this portion here. There's a steel insert there. They have a strap here so that if they do happen to tear here, which they will, they absolutely will, they are retained by this kind of steel hoop or strap over the top. So the engine doesn't flop around with a broken motor mount. It will still kind of sit on this block. Now compare that side by side with the brown dog mount, you'll note. Brown Dog does not have nearly as much rubber, but Brown Dog is using a piece of tubing that has a rubber bushing inside of it, so it is fully captured. It doesn't have this top with this thin little bit that'll tear off because guess what? The 4 liter is a torquey engine. I know, we're all stunned, but not really. Anyhow, so my hope is that this is the last set of motor mounts I ever put in this thing. And they kind of look cool. Why not? They're flying their flag pretty proud. Good on them. So, I'm going to get these thrown in and uh, let you guys know how that goes. So you might have to use something like a putty knife to help them get in there better. Uh, I'm going to have one of these little guys handy. So that helped coax it in. Might still need just a little bit of tapping from a dead blow to really get it to slide nicely in there. Let's try that. Now we don't want to do anything too ham-fisted. So we'll use a little dead blow. It's just we. See if we can give her a little tap. Hmm. Might be difficult to get a good angle. I don't want to wreck my brand new uh, power steering hose there. Oh, Lee is a nice tight fit. So, I've actually got my stud to pop into place there. Lower is almost lined up. Probably won't too, take too much more to do that. Moment of truth though, will this slide straight in? I would bet not. And that would be right. Okay, looks like it's a little low. So, two options. I want to get the engine up a little bit higher. What do you think we'll do? You gotta keep in mind, those other ones that were in there would have been sagging. All right, we're starting to get close. Probably hard to tell from that angle, just trust me. But we're having trouble getting spot on. So I'm gonna take a center punch, put it in there about as far as I can. And then using the power of a dead blow, drive it in. 
Now, don't get too worried about hitting it in. And, oh no, it went flush. The world has ended. Nah, it hasn't. It's gonna be just fine. We're gonna bring her up a hair. It's gonna be difficult, so let's use something a little shorter and easier. A couple eight trout chaps with a brass drift, and that is through, and it should be aligned. Let's see if we can get a bolt through it. Even though the bolts on these, you'll note that the end is quite tapered, you still, if you can at all avoid it, you don't want to use this as the thing that punches through and aligns everything. Because there are threads on it, and you, trust me, would prefer that those threads stay nice. You know, that's not to say you won't do a little bit of persuading. Typically, if you roll it around a little bit, which I hope you can see, you can kind of feel, aha, uh -huh, that's the side. Looks like we might need to come up just a hair, give ourselves a little more room to work. So, brought up more than a hair, but I'd rather not have to run back and forth too many times. Aha, uh -huh. a little bit of persuading. Uh -huh. Let's see if a gentle tap will bring her through. Yep. Try not to wreck your uh, wire just there. I do believe that goes down to your O2 sensor. It'd be better now to destroy that one. Okay. Now, one of the neat things is, you don't have to tighten everything right down right now. You don't want to. In fact, you want to leave this stuff on it's in installed but loose until we get the other side on it'll help everything just align better and just be a better overall deal so one of the fun things is now we get to break into this into this package of new hardware there aren't that many uh not that many parts you'll buy where you'll find someone will include all brand new hardware for the thing oh Granted, they didn't include the, that big cross bolt, but that's all right. But to replace this stuff, and with metric, which it should be, because it's a Cherokee, and they were worldwide. And because I don't hate myself too much, I will give it just a very, well, I'm going to pretend I'll go like dab of NPCs. Some people will tell you you want Loctite. I would tell you, you'd probably like to be able to remove it at some point in its history. Again, you might have to work a bit of the lining that. Yeah, I can see it's a bit off. So I'm gonna take care of that and then tell you guys how things went. There we go, top mounts in. There we go, top mounts are in, just finger tight, and I'll be going underneath and doing that. Adding. There we go, top mounts are in, finger tight. I'll be crawling underneath and putting in the uh, other night nut, and uh, we're also not gonna tighten this one too much. May as well follow the directions. Again, I think the guys know what the heck they're talking about.